welcome back to my channel. It's Lauren and if you're new here, welcome. And if you aren't, welcome back. So I've been recently posting YouTube shorts on my channel consistently and the most recent series that I did was a day by day of my trip to Korea and a few of you had a couple more questions so I wanted to film a video and go more into detail about everything. So I'm so excited to share this video with you. This is going to be my recommendations on what to do before and then while you're in Korea. And with that being said, let's get started. I want to start out by listing the things on what you should do in preparation to going to Korea. So my top thing that I think is pretty important is to either get a SIM or eSIM card. Unless you have international calling and data, I think this is a great option because you can reserve a card in advance on like a website like Trazy or Kluk. They have SIM cards at like a reduced price and you can easily pick up the card at the airport as soon as you get there. There's an option to also get like a pocket Wi-Fi, although that might be great for like a group if we're all sharing a Wi-Fi. One of the things that I have experienced with the Wi-Fi is that in like subways or places far underground where it's hard to get signal, it tends to be kind of glitchy and go in and out, especially if you're using your phone as like a navigation source. So I definitely recommend the SIM or eSIM card just because their service doesn't go out on you. So on the topic of reserving things, there's another thing that I want to recommend. If you're planning a trip to Jeju is to reserve a car because on Jeju, there's no trains or subways and it's hard for you to travel by bus or taxi because taxis are pretty expensive and buses don't run as frequently. So the easiest way of transportation is a car. The only thing is that if you are not from Korea, you have to get an international license. But if you have AAA, it only costs like $35 to get an international license and it's super quick. All you have to do is go into AAA, say that you want to get an international license, pay the fee and that's it. No tests, nothing. It was super, super easy. In order to get a car, you can also go on one of the websites that I mentioned earlier and just book it that way. And again, the process was really easy for me. We went to Seoul from Jeju and then when we got to Jeju, there was basically a sign that said car rentals so we followed that sign and then there was a bus that took us from the airport to the car rental place and then we picked up our car and then we just left. And one more thing, if you're booking the car, you don't have to pay for auto insurance. If you have like a Chase credit card or like a credit card that covers that for you. So because of that, it saved us maybe like 50, 60 dollars and heck. <laughs> So another thing to help prepare for your trip is to download a couple of apps. And the apps that I downloaded were Kakao Talk, Neighbor Maps, Kakao Maps, and Kakao Taxi. And basically they're mostly navigation. Kakao Talk is like the one and done communication app all across Korea. Everywhere you go, like everyone's using Kakao Talk. They use it for transportation, messaging. You can sign up for certain things if you have a cacao ID. They even have like a cacao friend store. It's really popular there so I definitely recommend you getting the app or if not at least making an ID because it can come in handy. So like I said earlier, I downloaded Naver and Cacao Maps for navigation because Google Maps is very very glitchy in Korea. It sort of works but not really. Whenever I tried to use Google Maps it would take me the wrong way or it would say that the duration of the time to get to where I have to go is like quadruple the time. So I rarely use Google Maps. It does work in Japan though, so that's great. But if for Korea, I think Naver and Kakao Maps were the best. Naver, a lot of the stuff you have to input the destination in Korean. So it was a little hard for me to find some of the names of the places that I wanted to go to. So I would use Kakao Maps for it. But then I still think that Naver was the most accurate and Kakao was like my second option. On the topic of not finding the correct place, <laughs> and getting lost. My last recommendation is to always double or triple check your resources if you want to go to a certain location because there were countless times during my trip where I wanted to go to like a certain store, a certain restaurant and it just didn't exist or it like moved places. We walked all the way to a store and it's closed. <laughs> 
Surprisingly and sadly, a lot of things in Korea tend to like come and go pretty quickly or that's what I've been told and especially recently because of the pandemic there have been new opportunities for places to open up but also close down as well there were a few times where I wanted to go to a store and then they were just gone <laughs> like on Yelp it said they were still there but they just didn't exist I definitely recommend double checking to see if those places are there even the places that I recommend in this video I will make sure that they are still there and I will double check them today but who knows if they are gonna be there like two or three years from now. A couple of ways that you could check them is to see if like the place that you want to go to has a designated website or going onto like social media to see if people have been going there recently. Now to the fun part, you finally made it to Korea, all finished planning so I'm going to recommend my top places that I really enjoyed in Seoul, Busan, and Jeju because those are the places that I went to when I went last year. In Korea, they're all about their cafes. There are so many, like anything that you can think of, whether it be like a phone case cafe, art cafe, you can make your own ring cafe, dog cafe, cat cafe, what else? <laughs> the cafes are endless. Like you close your eyes and walk a couple of steps and I guarantee when you open your eyes, there'll be like a cafe that you can see somewhere off into the distance or like right in front of you. So I narrow down my three top cafe picks, even though I went to five million of them. It was really hard to do, but here is number one. The first one that I recommend is Nudake. I hope I'm pronouncing that right. It's N-U-D-A-K-E. And it's the prettiest pastry cafe I've ever been to. Each of the pastries are like a literal work of art. The reason why I chose this was because like, you know, there are a lot of aesthetic looking food places in Korea but when i tried it it was really really good as well like sometimes things are just cute but they don't taste as great but when i ate like the desserts that i had there i was so so in love like there was like this half sculpture face pastry dessert thing that i had it had like a yuzu cream flavor and it was really good and then they have little tiny croissants what's not to love about baby croissants right oh and on top of that the area that it's in is like right next to the gentle monster so after you eat your pastries you can go shop for some sunnies my second favorite okay actually i don't know <laughs> nudake and this one are like one to one because if you are a dog lover this cafe is for you the second one that i would love to recommend to you guys is samoy cafe and from my knowledge, there's like two in Seoul. And the one that I went to was called Winter's Village and there were two floors full of Samoyas just roaming around, waiting for you to pet them, play with them, feed them snacks. They even let you take selfies with them. And then there was this one Samoya that had like, like two cute pink cheeks. I was told that was the mom just because she was a little older to be careful with her But she was so cute like two little pink cheeks like Pikachu <laughs> The last cafe that I recommend to you. I personally didn't go there I went to a cafe called O1 and then I stopped by this other cafe called onion They're more like traditional theme looking cafes one of them that I really recommend and I wanted to check out but it was super crowded that day was called Jungsudang Cafe and looking at the videos it literally looked like you're walking in some like nature wonderland in order to get to the cafe you had to walk across this water path along these circular stones and then inside the cafe it was like clear glass and all around is just nature and then the drinks and pastries looked amazing it was just oh i wish i went but if you guys go make sure to tag me in your videos or let me know down in the comments because i would love to know aside from cafes another thing that i wanted to recommend is this place called Acorn Caricature. It's this cute little shop where you go down a couple steps and then they have like little easel set up and people doing caricatures for you. You can do it of yourself 
or with your friends or you can even show them a picture and get a caricature done of people that aren't with you and then you could have them in your same photo that's what i did with me my dog and my boyfriend like my boyfriend and my dog weren't with me at the time so i showed them a picture of them and then they included all three of us in the portrait and it was so cute so i definitely recommend sometimes there's a line but i went on a weekday so it was absolutely empty so moving to busan i went to busan for only two days but i jam-packed my days super tight so i was able to do a lot so i'm gonna recommend two things for you so the first one is the sky capsule over in Hyundai beach sorry again if i'm mispronouncing the names but one tip if you want to make sure that you get on that day i say you go really early to make a reservation and then you can go to breakfast or to lunch and then come back later because it was recently trending on social media it got super popular and because it got popular it's super crowded so the sky capsule is basically a little tiny rail car overlooking Hyundai beach and it comes in like red, yellow, blue, green. And they're like these tiny little cars that you can sit in and just ride across all of Hyundai Beach. And it's super fun and peaceful, a great way to relax on your crazy hectic trip. It's round trip, so you can either take it back or you can take a faster beach train, which is on the ground. Personally, I thought one way was good enough. I took the beach train going back, but if you want a whole trip, I believe it's 30, 40 minutes one way. My next Busan recommendation is the Heidong Yonggungsa Temple. And it's basically this huge temple built on the ocean. You can go give your respects there. I threw a coin into like this little, little tiny hole and I hope I get good luck from that. Because it's near the ocean during the fall and winter time, it does get really cold, but I really think it's the must-see. Lastly, Jeju. I saved the best for last because when you think of Jeju, you think of those romantic Korean dramas where the couple goes on like an overnight trip together and it's all tropical and romantic. It's actually not that tropical, not like Hawaii. It was more city life than I imagined, but they do have a lot of attractions there like museums and gardens. So I definitely think you should go to Jeju at least once in your life because there are things to see there you can't see anywhere else in the world. Also, Jeju is known for their black pork belly, and black pork belly is the best thing ever. They have a designated area there just filled with black pork belly restaurants. So good, especially if you wrap it up in the little leaves. Forgot what it's called. Anyway, for attractions though, my favorite thing was definitely the Snoopy garden. I don't even have to say anything. A huge garden and there's Snoopy, put it together, super cute. But there's this other garden that I really wanna call out called the Spirited Garden. I think that place is a definite must see. Going there felt like walking into a Miyazaki film, like Spirited Away. It was super peaceful and relaxing. There were multiple waterfalls, stone men sculptures everywhere, and I fed a bunch of koi fish. It literally felt like a dream. On to my last recommendation in Jeju, Dongmun Traditional Market. I think in Korea, they're known for their traditional markets. So if you can, I would visit all the different ones in like Seoul, Busan, Jeju, everywhere. But I specifically recommend the Dongmun traditional market because when we went there, on top of all the amazing food that I tried, abalone kimbap, hoto, hamburger, grilled shrimp, they had this one booth where they were blasting music and had like these kitchen fire torches and they were cooking, but... <laughs> They were basically dancing and putting on a show for everyone there. They just like played a bunch of K-pop music and were swinging their torches around and dancing and it really hyped up everybody. And there were so many people around them just watching and I feel like that really made the traditional market for me. Okay, that concludes all of my recommendations for before going to Korea and during Korea. I hope you enjoyed watching. If you're still here, thank you so much and I hope to create more videos, whether it be about travel, food, unboxings, whatever you wanna see, let me know down below. I will be going on another trip soon, which is to Japan, so I will have a lot more content soon. But in the meantime, I'll see you in my next video. Okay, bye.